and welcome back for game two of LGD versus VG Losers Bracket Finals. I'm here, BSJ, Banana Slam Jamma, all the other names that you may know me as, the meme, the NH Last Hope, and then we have these other two. Yeah, I'm a lyrical Dota, and this over here is Chef Josh. Chef Josh. Um, or here. Chad. Chad is the other Chad is, Oh, yeah, that's true. I forgot about that. Oh. And Brad, your name is... Chad. What was it again? Zeke. Gabe? Gabe. Oh, Gabe. Last name Newell? Yeah, Gabe. that's the one. Okay. Do you or do you not? Bow Actually, down. I'm not going to say that. Never mind. <laughs> All right, so back to the game here. <laughs> I'm, not that was, that I'm, I'm never going to get to do the intro ever again. That was so spooky. I loved it. You came back in, and it was just like that intensity, the burning passion yes. for Dota. I could feel it. Oh. One day. I could taste it over here. I don't know if that's like, is that, am I having a stroke? Is there some, yeah, something? Uh, that you might want to get that checked out. Okay. Yeah. But needless to say, I'm excited for the second game. That first game was quite a topsy turvy back and forth. Wibbly wobbly. I didn't know what was going on. So much tangling, dangling, Tangle, exchangling yeah. in the flangling. Yeah. And, yeah. He's, he's and Flanders, right? Yeah, now? I can't think of any other name <laughs> that or word Stupid, that Stupid sexy Flanders. <laughs> yeah. Is that I mean, you right now? I, I heard God, worse I for Flanders. sure. Yeah, me too. Great show. All right. So there's a Luna band out on the LGD side. We have a draft. Even though, even though they won anyway, they're still taking it. It was still out. quite they, scary. They really I feel like, like if that yeah. gone a little bit different in the early game, that could have been a very Fairness. different game. Mm -hmm. yeah, look at these guys, they're doing it. Um yeah, it was uh it was definitely one of those those types of matches where like you could have felt it go either way and um I, I think all of us liked the draft that Vici had more, mm -hmm. but L G D were still able to pull it out in the end and I think that there were some really good itemization uh choices that that address the problems that LGD had uh, in their draft, and that's part of the reason why they won. We talked about FY with the agonims on Naga Siren. Um, but going into this, I kind of feel like LGD is the one that's even more favored because they won with what I think yeah. was the worst draft. There is no Bane band out here. I'm curious to see if LGD will pick that up first. There it is. Bang. Predictions. Easy. Okay, just don't say anything for the rest of the oh, cast. Oh, yeah. Okay, guys, goodbye. Yep, thank you. He's done his part. Uh, we'll be replacing him with nothing. <laughs> Okay, moving on. Uh, in response from VG Game Man, I, I expect something like Gyro or Doom, but the Bane kind of counters the Gyro as we've seen with Enfeeble, uh, limiting his damage output, especially in like the mid to late game. Early game, he still has like the Rocket Barrage damage, which is plentied in those engagements. But once you get into these late game team fights, he's all flat cannon. And let's just, you know. Let's just wait and see. That's the best way to know. Well, when they ran against the, the Bane the other day, um, Vici J Storm against Vici, uh, it was the Night Stalker Gyrocopter. Night Stalker's obviously been bad now, but the reason that they were still able to run the gyros because then they had the Medusa, which was like that bigger, uh, you know, right-click core that Bane had to enfeeble. And you can only really, uh, you know, enfeeble oh, one of them back to the Oh, This is really good. I like this a lot. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I got to break this silence thing. It, 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 that's my boy. That's my boy right there. He's coming in with the crits. Instant snap pick Omni Knight. Wow. I love the immediate addressing of the Kunkka X. Mm -hmm. Something that we've seen not, you know, obviously we've seen the one shots later on in the game, but in the early to mid game, that X just catching you out. You know, you're. it's like an inevitable death mm -hmm. where you're just like, I got X four seconds. Within the next four seconds, I'm getting soaked into a boat torrent. And. Omni Knight, last game we saw them respond on the side of Vici to the Bat Rider mm -hmm. with a Legion Commander. And this is the same concept LGD is employing where they're saying, I'm going to not only pick a hero that itself can dodge the X because of Repel, but can also make it so the rest of his team can dodge the X. And, and, it, and it puts you in this position that, like, before we saw this Kunkka, the, 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 they'd respond with a carry pick like a like a life stealer or something along those lines where they can dodge the X themselves. But now with this Omni Knight pick, they, they can still give Ame whatever hero he yeah, wants. Yeah, it opens up it, the other core roles. They have roles. something to address it. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, and obviously, Omni's been doing really well in these games recently. He's been, yeah. He's been feeling like a big, beefy boy that's just... Not able to be stopped. Is that, is that how you like it? Yeah, yeah. I like I like the alliteration, <laughs> you know? Yeah, the big beefy boys. The big so beefy boys. The other interaction that you get here is the Omni Knight and Kunkka Tidebringer, um, which is always a weird one to me because there's some things where it's like before uh, there were times where wasn't it like you're invulnerable to physical damage because Cleave is physical damage that's based that, that's not reduced by armor. Yeah. So um, at the very least, I know that if, you know, Kunkka is going to be hitting another hero as they've got uh, the Guardian Angel on, there's not going to be any damage dealt as long as the 
That makes Hero sense. Yeah, I'm, I'm like pretty certain if you're like Ghost Scepter as well, you don't take damage from, from Tidebringer, so yeah. that would make sense that if you're Omni Knight ulted, you would Radiant not take damage. Thank God, no DP. It's it's one of those weird things, too. Like, we were talking about the other day, the brew split, and like how much armor do the brewlings yeah. have? Radiant like, because, you know, TA, it's a different way where that damage uh, is always going to be based upon the armor of the, uh, or the, it's always going to be based upon the amount of damage that's dealt, regardless of armor. But I would Kunk love to a see a weird. Rubik pick here. Rubik's super good against Omni and Bane. And I haven't seen too much of that hero this tournament, but I just love it against both of the heroes mm -hmm. on the side of LGD. Be down for Rubik. If I've ever seen a good third pick Rubik, it would be now. Five seconds remaining. I guess the only reason you wouldn't want to is because... I mean, yeah, you need to take a support here anyway, so... It's just the landing stage you'd be a little LGD's fearful of. Yeah. There it is. Well played. So That's now are you not going to say four? anything? I'm done. Am I solo casting this like Lyrical, anyway. it's all... Yeah, it's all you. <laughs> you know, Josh, I haven't said a single rude word to you. You did, this you did a couple times. You told me to stop talking. Except for <laughs> except for the times that I did. Yeah. I have not said a single rude word to you this entire time. You do have a point. Yeah. But now it's start. I mean, and now that we got the solo cast by uh by Lyrical Lyrical over here, I guess I guess we got to also known know, as Gabe, mm. also known as yeah, Newell. Uh, I guess we got to, you know, do Five something over here. So we might as well just flame each other. Yep. Nothing better. So what do you do. think LGD? LGD. Uh, They've got their spo I mean, Omni might be offlaner, but we'll, we'll see what he does. Yeah, let's I think that I LGD think they're going to pick their four. I don't like Sand King because of the Rubik. I they could do ET themselves, like we saw. We've seen Bane ET in the past, but I don't know. If that's not necessarily catch. That's like more so team fight control. Even like a lion might be good here. In the past, this is where you would have seen something like an Earth Spirit, but I think that hero is just so dead now. He's just too weak in lanes. He's yeah. more of like a kill roaming hero, and the way he plays, it's not necessarily all the nerfs that brought him into the dumpster. Mm -hmm. It's like those in tandem with the fact that the way he wants to play just isn't good anymore. Uh, I wouldn't even mind like a Slardar or I think it's Slardar or Slardar ET. What was the other one I mentioned? Or Lion? Yeah, Lion. Those are the three heroes. And if if I have enough time, I'll be able to ramble off every hero in the game of Dota. Mm -hmm. Radiant team pick. No yeah. need. Oh, yeah, Tusk. Tusk. Okay, okay. It fits that role. It's the, another save. Yeah. It's interesting. Well, and it's also like the 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 catch early on too before uh, you know items come out. It seems like LGD is sort of lacking damage on this draft right now. They're going to have to pick a couple heroes to fill in that gap with the next. They have no tower pressure and no no hero damage really. They've just got a whole lot of control right now and save. So so I have a feeling they're going to pick out these you know high damage seconds, tower eight. pushers or hero killers out from these last two. Let's picks. find out if this is going to be a core Kunga. I seconds, think it will be revealed in this pick and we. We also know that Lycan could go off lane, mm -hmm. or mid, or safe lane. So there's all types of options for VG Gaming's draft to go from here. This pick is pretty much going to say this is what we're doing this game, mm -hmm. because you can't hide forever. So I, I'm seeing, like you said, three kind of saves right now. The last pick from LGD has to be huge. LGD I'm thinking you take a Doom or something that's very single target focused, like this Morphling I like here. Morphling. And just blow somebody up because whoever they're going to take here needs to fulfill so many different roles that mm -hmm. if you take whoever this is out of the fight, it's going to be a great position. They need a hard one. I think uh, PL sucks against l the Kunkka. I, hmm. Looking at, I need to pull up a hero list Ten here. Seconds mm -hmm. remaining. Like it, it would be kind of a, a Dusa type of game, but I don't know if that's how, how that matchup works. I think Slark is Marshall probably their now. best option here with okay. Omni Knight. I think it's actually a really good Slark game. And I think, like you said, I mean, they need... They have damage issues when they pick Slark in the mid game, but I think they need a hero that just... I don't know how to explain it, but puts the entire game in his ball... Puts the entire game in his ball... ball I mean, even with this Omni <laughs> whatever. Knight... In, 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 in his, his court. His court, yeah. Thank you. Even even with the Omni Knight here, I feel like a Lifestealer might, might help fill that gap. Yeah, the thing about Lifestealer against uh, the... There's so I, I said peel, but I didn't think they'd pick it. I mean, now now this Kunkka can attack, you know, a majority. He, he, he sees six illusions in a hero, and he, he wants to attack one so of the illusions. So for anyone so. who wasn't here on chat, illusions count as zero armor when it comes to Tidebringer. So if you hit an illusion with your Tidebringer, it is pure damage on everything else. Mm -hmm. um, that's why I didn't think they would pick peel. But I almost certainly believe that will now be a core Kunkka because they picked PL. They can just throw him in the mid lane. So with that being said, it's going to be a four position Kunkka. Yep. And we need to see a mid laner from LGD that helps their mid game damage problems. 
I don't even think that. Storm was the pick, but I think an early aggressive hero, once again, something along the lines of the Quap or Puck, just, just a hero that can show up in the other lanes and make plays. Because Omni Knight and PL are heroes that can be aggressive, but they themselves don't exactly make plays. Uh, OD is That's already banned, so say. he's so Ten that would have been a good pick for them as well. The Storm Spirit was banned out by Vici, so it looks yeah. like they were they were understanding of that. Ban the Tide Hunter, I like that ban. Looks like Ember is gone as well. That's another hero that they could pick potentially. Yeah, just any early here. Uh, they even could put this PL mid and give us a Slark. That's true. Do it. I'm thinking though that like a lot of the problems could also be Lycan. Like, Lycan is Ten kind of remaining. uncontrolled right now with the exception of Bane, and there's a lot of ways to deal with the Bane. Five PL scales really remaining. well against it, but like you said, he doesn't exactly control it. And Vici are going to have the last pick, too. I really hope Vici issue. makes this a core kunk, and now that they pick PL, it's like, you mm -hmm. actually just get one-shotted. Hey! The All right. I should have just said Quap because I liked it last game, but they picked Puck last game, so I, I guess that was Vici gaming. But... So now this is the, I was going to say it's like a good Viper game, but I think they just leave Kunkka core because of the PL, and it's not like a, I mean, it's probably not a good matchup versus Queen of Pain, but I also don't think it's terrible. Ten seconds There's remain. actually so many different ways they could go with this. Mm -hmm. Viper is like really bad against Five PL, so I don't think you pick remain. that. I'm only mentioning Viper because it hard lane counters the Queen of Pain. I think uh, if you do run the Kunkka there mid, you're going to need to get some help for rotations because Tusk will, it, like if Tusk comes mid, Kunkka is probably just dead. Absolutely. So I, I'm actually feeling like that might be too rough for him. And maybe they do take something to like a puck to deal with the Quap now. I still like ET Sand King type heroes. Oh, Earth Shaker. Earth Shaker. Is that a core shaker? Yeah, I think yeah, so. Yeah, I mean, it's, oh, no, no, it's, it's not. It's a four. Okay. So they are putting this Kunkka mid. I'm glad the, they the did that against the PL pick. Yeah, I think you have good. to. Like, if they give you a hero that just dies to one shot later on in the game, like mm -hmm. that, you're going to get the free attack every time. PL's like, they're not going to hide their illusions from you. Mm -hmm. It's the 11 Lycan. I don't know. Like, I, I feel like Earth Shaker's... I don't love this hero, and for whatever reason, most people think, I'm not saying these pros think this, but most people think Earthshaker counters PL, and that's just not how the dynamic of that matchup works. So it's hard to explain, but Earthshaker counters heroes that want to go in and have to commit with BKBs, and then once their BKBs are like low duration or they don't have one yet, they kill them. But PL's a hero that does not have to commit to fights. He can just lance and send illusions in, and mm -hmm. as long as Ame doesn't group up with his illusions, Earthshaker doesn't really cause PL too many issues. And so... I basically think the PL draft is going to win, but because of that, I'm going to call <laughs> the Kunkka draft. Well, and <laughs> see, the other thing that's nice about it is thinking about the Kunkka, everybody thinks about the Cleaves nowadays. It's also that, you know, torrent and boat that comes out, and Lanham is an amazing setup for that. You start getting early points here into Fissure. If you get it up to the max points, then you can just drop the boat, and then the torrent immediately afterwards, after the Fissure comes, and it's an easy setup for, like, a full combo. And that kills almost everybody onto LGD's side. So I have a feeling that if, you know, Kunkka rotates in or if the, the Earthshaker rotates into the Kunkka's lane and fissures from fogs or from smoke, the Quap might just be dead. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Gabe, I've been wanting to ask you, man. Okay. What is more your type of cleavage, the Kunkka or the mm. Queen of Pain? <laughs> Definitely the Kunkka. Yeah, I you say? yeah, you seem like more of a Kunkka fan. I am. I myself am a Queen of Pain fan, but to each his own. But and she I doesn't have any your choices. They don't. Oh, I mean, that's a, called a double entendre, Gabe. That's half an entendre. That's not even a thing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Moving back. <laughs> to the Sometimes when you get called out, there's just nothing else to say than just to move on. So Fair Ami's enough. actually looking like he's doing like this ag aggro dual lane setup with the Bane. I like this against the Morphling. Oh, what was that? Ping. Okay, uh, but Ame, you know, this is a hero that Peel, he, he likes to be aggressive against the heroes like Morphling, where Morphling level 1 is not all that scary in lane. The heavy stats build coming up from Paparazzi. This is a classic back when Wand used to include a circlet. Oh, and look at that one right there. He's pick up the bounty rune, run away from these folks, although he is going to get sharded. Kind of doesn't matter as much because it's uh, lower cooldown. He should still be able to walk away from this, I think. Chalice is still chasing him. Oh, they're actually walking He's the PL back to a whole top. lot of harass, but it's not enough to kill him. Yeah. He gets out of there. Has a salve if he needs to use or just some more tangos. He's going to salve. And they head off.
Okay, Ame is giving the whole back and forth like last game we saw. He walked all the way from bottom to top, back to bottom. Surprisingly, I think he wants to be against the Morphling. That's uh, maybe the other lanes are the bigger issues that they have. Um, but we'll see how this mid matchup goes too. Uh, maybe they can keep the Tusk stuck into one lane. We also are seeing the pull of the creep wave by Lanham right now, uh, who's going to be taking it through the jungle while mid lane a lot of damage is being dealt. But yeah, they're going to pull this wave through and should get a nice little time for the like and off lane. And uh, these Banes, they just walk into a lane and enfeeble the carry. Paparazzi does still have 35 damage, a little bit better than the 19 we saw on Gyro yesterday, but still quite difficult to last it. He's sitting here with full agility the whole time. It doesn't seem like LGD has all too much they can do to him at the moment, especially with this level 1 enfeeble. So he's just going to sit here. He's got nine tangos. He's not all too worried. There is an enormous wave about to push into the side of LGD, so let's see what happens. Yep. And now FY going to come back here, contest for Eleven's farm, and going to try and get whatever denies he can. This is often how you make this off lane like and work. You just get a little bit of help, and that big creep wave pushing in bottom. Like you said, they're going to try and pull Ame back into it. Doppelganger's back, and well, there's a ton of experience. Mm -hmm. That's the second time he's lifted him when there's like a bunch of creeps. Fenrir doing basically the maximum harass by utilizing the creeps to hit him while he lifts him, and that's super good play. But mid lane. Quite a trade going on. Somnus took a lot of damage from these creeps, but he has that salve and Ori does not. So that's a perfectly fine trade for Somnus. He's going to heal himself back to full. And Ori does have it flying out to him on the courier as well as a bracer. Yeah, and this CS should even out a little bit after this creep wave. Uh, 10 and 2 on the Kunkka versus 7 1 on the Quap. This top lane, it seems like Eleven's holding on. He's getting a decent amount of farm versus this Tusk Omni right now. Not all too bad. This is not the kind of lane Lycan wants to be in, though, just because he wants to get that like early home of the Dominator and apply a lot of tower pressure. Mm -hmm. But he won't be able to do that because of the fact that he's behind a hero like Omni, who's just a wall. Tusk and they're going, going on. on him. Trying to see if they can shards take Shards going to come out, see if they can catch him here. Nice patience on the shards. shards. Getting out of there. Oh. TV. Great Man, the perfect timing on the Fisher. But he has no Very sustain well on 11, so that's not even that bad for them that they don't get that kill. He can't walk back into this lane. He is flying himself some tangos and sals, but that's going to take a, quite a while to get there. X comes out mid. There's a torrent on the Quap. He's just going to blink out, but that is a significant amount of harass coming out. He has another Tidebringer here. Oh, not going to try and use it there to punish Somnus. Instead, just wants to dominate the lane with it instead. He's just going to salve up in the back here. Sure his bottle coming out on Somnus, which is a pretty big deal for him. Yeah, so I like the way that they've been playing this. They've been sort of keeping that, that tusk stuck up here in the top lane, and that means they can't rotate to help out for the Queen of Pain. Uh, and so it's been the Earthshaker that's been making all these rotations. So pretty impressive play from Lanham so far on a hero that I think a lot of people have thought was kind of dead. Paparazzi actually putting a point in his adaptive strike in order to get CS. Mm -hmm. Sad world we live in against a Bane. Hard. 11, taking some more damage. The Purification comes in, and First Blood drawn by Chalice. There it is. Chalice is pretty happy with this. And I look forward to FY most likely rotating out of this lane as soon as he feels like this Omni's good without him, and I think that's I mean, about now. He's got Soul Ring coming out on the Courier. Yeah. He's versus this Lycan. I think he'll be able to sit in this And that's the beauty of a hero like Omni. Give him a little bit of a lead, and then just say, you do your thing, man. You're going to win your lane. You're going to put a lot of pressure on the opponent laner, and you see him just walking at 11. Mm -hmm. And now that allows you to pressure other lanes. FY is actually just going to look like he's walking back to base, potentially. Actually, no, so the they got a DD on the Queen of Pain, so I think he's going to just pop the Mango and see if they can I go like for it. the Fissure, but they have caught Somnus already, so in some trouble. He's going to blink oh. away, but pulled back in and kill and they make that rotation a little bit too late. Tried to time it perfectly, but didn't He's quite work looks out. Looks like Tusk is just going to sit middle and get a little bit of levels while he waits. Another example of a game where I don't think... I mean, this one's a little bit different than last, but I don't think either mid laner should be dying here. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's just those rotations, right? Which Yeah, this game is a little different. wasn't a solo kill. But oh. X-No, a little bit of trouble here. Follow-up stun from Lanham into the Fissure. And that's really racking up this impact from the four-position Earthshaker this early on in the game. Mm -hmm. He has 1,100 gold. 
Maybe he will be able to counter this PL. Yeah, if you get an early blink, that's no joke. But he probably goes for mana boots because he has a morphling. Yeah. There you go. Predicted. There you go. Yeah, predicting that the support shaker would get mana boots. <laughs> Mom, look at me now. You're doing it. Well, Ori going to XTP, bring himself back there. Bottom lane, we're seeing that. Uh, constant pressure. The fissure is not going to block him off, but just keeping him from getting whatever little CS they can. And since the Phantom Lancer does not have a stick right now or anything, they can just spam out these spells constantly. FY is checking runes now. He's lurking mid, probably hoping that Ori will play aggressive, as he is now. I don't know if they'll plan on going in without a little bit more harass. Oh, they have another X if they want to use it, but... All the cleave damage. Yeah, it's, this is... This is where the lane becomes hard. Like, I think early on, if Tusk was there, then they could probably get the kill. But now it's becoming really tough to lane against the Kunkka. Mm -hmm. And he's not even level 7 yet. Yeah. With the max Tidebringer, 4 second cooldown. So, 6.5 minutes in right now. And still relatively even. Huh? Queen of Pain comes back in. They still have the boat if they want to try and turn this one. The Sonic Wave is down, but the boat yeah, coming snowball. in. The turn, Snowball, great save. And they kill him off as Lanham just has to look on. Sick patience by FY, you know. A lot of Tusks, they would just Snowball to go on for the kill, but he knows that their only counterplay is the boat. He's just holding on to it so that they don't have to disengage and then re-engage from the boat. And that's why they picked the Tusk against the Kunkka. Yeah. Looks like Ame is doing a whole lot better than Paparazzi in this bot lane, as expected, with this Bane spamming and Feeble. Surprisingly, Paparazzi's game isn't terrible, which is pretty much all you can ask for against a Bane like mm -hmm. this, I think. I think the stick choice by him was super good, because, like, X Nova's always just enfeebling him, and he's maxing that out, so he's going to have it all the time, so he's constantly got a full stick. So never super really value worried. on Morph, who's, like, l high armor, low health hero. Yeah. Oh, he tried to use the Dapter Strike and actually gets the creep denied. Whenever you utilize mana and spells, oh, they're going on Ame. Maybe going to be able to find this kill. They've got he the waveform through in a second, waiting for his opening. Adapt Strike, not enough. Yeah, but whenever you have to use those abilities to try to get CS and then it gets denied anyway, it's pretty crippling. He can just walk and uh, shrine up on the side of the PL. Checking the rune is FY. It's going to be top. Somnus gets an illusion rune. Not exactly a game-changing rune for a Queen of Pain. Eleven, almost to his HOD here. He's got just the Glove of Haste remaining to, to pick up. I hope he looks to rotate to a different lane if he ever ults. He's never killing the Zombie Knight, so if he wants to do something, it's, it's elsewhere. And I like the way Chalice is playing up in his face. Mm -hmm. He knows he's, he's got no threat on the other side yeah. of the team. Uh, Morphling's not going to rotate. Kunkka rotations, he can just repel off the X. There's no mm -hmm. counterplay on the side of Vici to what Omni Knight's doing. And that's super important for all these players. Like, they know, like, when we pick this hero, we look to see, how do I die? What's it look like? And he knows. It, there actually is no way he dies unless he just walks into four heroes. And so he can sh sit behind the tier one with no fear. And he's going to have a massive impact this game on the Omni. Bottom lane, they get the lift back there onto the Bane, trying to bring him down. But the turnaround is going to be there as well. Fender being forced back out. So they're fine. And again, Heroes sitting mid, Lanham just throwing out those fissures and blocking Somnus off. And they do have an X now, but again, FY comes in. They're going to drop the boat as well. They have the Snowball ready to save him away as Ori gets jumped in on top of. And, well, they take him down yet again. I love this rotation for Chalice. I hope he runs right back top after this is said and done. And again, perfect patience from FY doing exactly what Brian had mentioned earlier, allowing for that clean kill. They're going to get some damage on this tower here. Chalice going back home. He knows, like, he's the only one that can easily deal with this Lycan. So if he leaves top, then suddenly this Lycan can actually put pressure onto buildings. So he makes that rotation, oh, but God. immediately goes back top. And Fenrir is dead somehow. I didn't see it. Um, it looked like it must have just been a Spirit Lance and some other, you know, brain, brain saps being thrown out there. It's no a lot points of in Nightmare. Wow. Yeah. Paparazzi takes another nuke. And Enfeeble is there. They're going to bring back in the Rubik. Ame is up in his face right now. Doing a good bit of damage. He's having to go over towards strength for him, but with Lanham coming in as well, able to get the fissure block off. They get the waveform through, not actually doing enough damage. He jumped into Somnus now, so Paparazzi going to fall, and Vici are just falling apart here. 
Lanham only level four himself, and well, he throws out one of the enchant totems. The fissure as well, it's not nearly doing enough damage to Ame, and nobody is going to come down to help these guys out. Four bottom, and LGD killing them all. And he's just bottled up and earned on Ame, so he's good to go after basically dropping down to no health and no mana. And this is exactly how PL wants to play, and this is why PL, they did pick it against the Morphling. It's just a faster hero. He comes online much sooner. He's able to be much more impactful, survivable, and just offers a lot more damage to the stage. And now that he has this level six up, he can send illusions to take the tower and make it so his catapult will deal a lot of damage. I'll probably even take this tier one. Yep. Diving land oh, a lot of trouble. Oh, you gotta be careful. That's why I was still lurking. There's trees. a lot of creeps in the area. He's thinking about it, but can't get within range. Great shards there as well to back him out. And it's this almost is like why they're trying Phantom to not all that bad against Earthshaker, but he might be in trouble now. No illusions, though. Lifted. There's the jump in, and Somnus just finds another kill. Ame, low but not dead yet. He is eventually going to fall, though. They still managed to take down the tower. Fenrir going to die to Somnus as well. His Queen of Pain is just wrecking havoc everywhere. And now that he does have a Sonic Wave back up in three seconds, if they can manage to bait it out long enough Omni for Paparazzi. Knight? He's thinking about going for this jump in. Sonic Wave and the jump. No, he missed on the scream. Omni Knight actually just died to Lycan solo. How does... Legitimately, I have no he idea does, how that happened. The no GA. I, I don't know what happened. He had a Satter creep with him as the HOD creep. I'm not, a, I'm not That's sure. That's a pretty big deal going on, but still, meanwhile, they're cleaning up Bane's Fiend Grip. Full duration on the Kunkka, and Somnus is wicked sick. I've heard this guy's a decent quad player. This game's getting out of hand. Yeah, like, maybe? It, it's no. completely falling apart yeah. now. Probably the best quad in the world, actually. SCCC? No, he's not. I think maybe quad <laughs> is absolutely bonkers. I'm not trying yeah. to take anything away from SCCC, but... I, I, I almost surprised they don't pick this hero for him more often because he just puts on a clinic every single game they pick it. Mm -hmm. Well, and th this is the type of game where you can keep this lead going and snowball from it. Like LGD, it just doesn't look like Vici have, has been able to pull anything together really. And well, Rubik does get his level six or seven now, six now, so he's going to have purification available, level four. But yeah, there's just going to be so much space for Peel to farm because of the aggressive Quap as well as the Omni Knight being able to play up in the faces. Bo comes Omni out mid onto Omni. Is Looks he like he dead? may get bursted down. Is. There it wow, is. Wow, so many stuns. Echo Slam committed for that. Turn around though. Somnus is still here and he has no Sonic Wave but still a lot of right click damage. <laughs> and punch. Stealing the Walrus Punch, not bad. Somnus running uphill into four heroes and still is able to jump out of there. Paparazzi jumps in. Good play there, taking over the Queen of Pain, but can't kill off FY and wants to go for another blink, another screen of pain. They get the silent, the nightmare onto him. No fiends grip, but the snowball is there. Paparazzi almost dead. Can he turn this back around? He blinks forward, trying to play maybe squat better than him, but it's not happening yet. Waveform forward finds the kill, but Paparazzi, can he get out? If he manages to escape from this, unreal, but it is not meant to be godlike maybe at 13 minutes. He just knows how to push the limits on this Queen of Pain. Mm -hmm. Like he just blinks into the fight like three or four times on a hero that usually the only way you die is by blinking in. But knowing exactly, exactly when to go in, that just comes from playing a lot of Queen of Pain. And as I mentioned, Ame is just allowed to farm during all this, and surprisingly, Eleven is pretty dang farmed. He almost has Necrobug one, so that could be quite impactful suit on in the game. Somehow he's higher level than Chalice, I guess, after killing him solo, but... Fiend's grip oh, on to Lycan as he tries to run away, and it comes off cooldown. It's used immediately. Mm -hmm. It's not quite close sure. enough. They were smoked up on Beachy, but they just caught out on Chalice before they actually get the... Or not, sorry, on Chalice, but on uh, 11. That's the difference. Just those couple of seconds slower, and it means that Lycan dies. It, would, it was kind of sad there. It was the, on the side of 11, because he saw that this gank was coming over, but he didn't quite catch vision of the Bane in time, so when he ran back in, knowing his team was smoked behind him, expecting to be able to survive, that Fiend's Grip came out, and that was just about the only thing on the map that could kill Song him. Song is blinking oh. and aggressively. DD rune, boat hits, but it just doesn't matter. Fenrir's in trouble. He goes down to the Omni Knight heal. Chalice with a double kill. What's he going for next on that Omni Knight? He's going for the pipe. I like it a lot. That removes pretty much every hero on the game, except for the Cleave from Kunkka and the Lycan, and they have GA for that. So this PL almost has defusal. He's quite strong at this stage in the game. Somnus hasn't shown what item he's choosing to go. I'd really like him to go this orchid, like an orchid build. 
So I'm just going to say to all those people out there that complain about Kunkka, he's only good when you get to that 25, so please don't nerf my guy. Uh, let's see, Paparazzi now is going to switch over to Waveform. Does look like he's going to be able to get out of there. And in fact, if they want to turn it and send him to FY, it's not going to happen quite yet. They are turning on to X Nova to see if they can kill him off. But Chalice shows up as well and has a purification, another Nightmare Throne. He can take that one off of him if he wants, but that was actually from the Rubik. So they still jump forward and find the kill on the Lanham. It's Snowball on to Fenrir. Might catch him out here. He has no nothing. Oh, oh white. Oh, it's just a little barely bit off the shards, yeah. I do like this Treads pickup on the Morphling here on Paparazzi. I think he, he knows that they're going to have a lot of sk little skirmishes like that, and it's it's just such a valuable item on a hero like Morphling that can pump out right-click damage. You know, but He's just getting enfeebled, though, if you've seen in these fights. He's been hitting for virtually zero damage. I'm not saying I disagree with you, but... This is not a game that Morphling can actually fight at this stage in the game is the problem that he kind of has to, so I agree that his, his adjustment is good, but they're already down by 6k, and this is just a situation where Vici kind of has do-nothing cores, mm -hmm. and Kunkka's their only do-something core, and they have Tusk, Doppelganger, as well as uh, Omni Knight to basically nullify his ability to do anything in this game mm -hmm. uh, in terms of making kills happen, at least. And so how, like, the, other than Eleven getting that solo kill on... Onto Chalice, I don't really see many more kills happening for VG. Earthshaker is, let's see, what's he worth? Is he, he's not even close to his Blink Dagger. They need to set it up with the Earthshaker and the Kunkka together, and that's the only way that I think that they can really kill people, unless Lycan just, like, ulties onto somebody. Ame is up here, and this is maybe an opportunity, but they don't have the Kunkka. Not sure if this is going to be good enough. Echo Slam, ever mind! Uh, <laughs> just drop everything on him. Yeah, I don't think Ame has to be playing this aggressively. Same idea here. His team has smoked up behind him just exactly what we saw in the opposite direction, but obviously very much worth for the side of Vici. Surprised these guys are getting caught out like right before their teams are getting here. I guess they just don't expect themselves to die. So he went for the Yules on the Queen of Pain. Helps him dodge the X. Also lets him play on the map more because of the mana regen. Almost caught there with the... That maybe is just thinking about going in here. Like you said, with that Yule Scepter feeling pretty close to invincible. Uh, Helmdom creep, 200 gold. This is the second one they took out as well. So Lycan just had it off of cooldown, and now another creep taken away. It's 400 gold in the space of about a minute and a half. Looks like LGD is just going to pressure down this mid tower. They know that they're in the stronger position in this game, and that the VG game can't really respond. This Morphling is not going to come online for a very long time. Mm -hmm. So, very tough game right now. And with the jump in, the Repel, that maybe Queen of Pain blows up the Earthshaker. And oh, the rest of each is here. Paparazzi takes over the Omni Knight. So he can repel himself and then jump in. Or he's going to repel Ori instead. And now the boat comes out. They take him down. Not bad. Chalice also that. trying to get out of here. He does get the Guardian Angel, though. Doesn't connect on to... Uh, maybe Queen of Pain, Somnus running out of there as Fly going to try and snowball off away to the creep. Does look like he's going to be able to escape for the moment. The Nightmare there on to Bane. He's starting to drop. So LGD actually losing more and more heroes. This is a, a dieback. Dieback on Bane. Yeah, he came in with the grip and used it on the Omni, or sorry, on the on the Coco, but he just did not have the damage for it. He's setting up for those cheaper buybacks in the future. Oh. Think about it. The next level play. FY getting caught here on the tusk. He gets the snowball off, but that's just delaying the inevitable. Maybe he'll die to the stop. He's looking for it. Oh, they they stunned the ancients. Close, but no cigar. Got a 5,000 gold lead at 18 minutes into this game. Not insurmountable, and they're starting to bring it back with the net worth and experience leads pulling closer, but it's a long road. Paparazzi still working on this Lincoln Sphere. He's about halfway there. Necker Without three. the Lycan, I don't know how they ever killed the Zombie. Necker 3 is coming out very soon in this Lycan. He's going to be quite a big threat. But the question is, is how, how do you get these you know, these do-nothing cores, as you were saying? How do you get them back online in time? I think they just have to keep doing what they're doing, where they're taking fights when LGD presents them to them. Like, don't let LGD get too many objectives for free. And LGD is trying to force the issue, as you see here. But I, I, I think Vici's on the counterplay uh, train. That's all they have to do is they have to sit on their side of the map, farm up, and then make sure they don't just get ran over. Well, it looks like LGD is trying to force something down mid. They have a smoke here. They're trying to catch somebody behind the tower. Ward coming out from X Nova. No like an ulti just yet. So they're going to try to wait for that. Avicii Gaming is aware of the fact that they need to be ready to respond at any point in time, and they're just sitting as five heroes over here farming away. Kunkka doesn't have a TP. 
Paparazzi does, but it's getting close to the bounty runes, and that means that they're going to give up a couple of them in exchange for this tower, it looks like. So Ori picks up one, Chalice gets the other. They get the tower. Well, that's it's something. It's, it's pretty good. I'll take that any time. Yeah, once they have this Morphling Lincolns, he'll be able Oh, but he's TPing into Tusk. So quite an odd TP. They can just run at him now. They know he has no way out of this, but the only way this is good for Vici is that they plan to fight around this. I don't think they want to fight down here. Very odd. It lets the Queen of Pain freely push top. Not a fan of this TP. The only way this is good is either fighting around here or if they try to take this Tier 1 bottom. Because when a carry like this TPs to bottom, he's pretty much dragging at least one or two heroes, if not his entire team, with him. So there's either going to be a fight bottom or nothing at all, and I think both situations favor LGD. You can see Paparazzi playing very safe down here. He has a ward above him. He was concerned they were going to come from further he down scanned, the lane. He, he scanned him out. Yeah. Yep, got him both there. So he's just going to back off, meet up with his team again. This is like a map surrendering TP, though. I've, I've talked about this a decent amount where it allows top lane to get pushed in. It allows them to push in bottom as well on the side of LGD, and then they also can defend mid. So they, as long as LGD doesn't get caught out on Chalice, he does, is there a blink on Shaker? No, not quite yet. Not in position. They do have shards on Fenrir to maybe set something up, but as you said, everybody's splitting out across the map. If they want to come back and defend the mid tower, they can, or Chalice is just They're going to back go. away and give it up. Surprisingly enough, they're just too scared of that Lycan, Necro Book 3, and Ulti. They're, they're just going to walk into Roche. Bring out Roche here. There it is. Hmm. He's actually going to send the minions. To check for uh, wards mm -hmm. with the true sight. That's a good idea. Well, wow. it does look like LGD are going to move in and contest this, have an idea that it's going on, and there is a scan. They hit there onto Fenrir, who is sitting outside of the pit. Roche is down to about half HP right now. They're going to send in the first round shards. Eleven actually fully blocked in right there. He can't get out of the pit inside of his ultimate. Chalice lifted, but they're still inside of here and now going to run away. And BGK very, very nice cannot choice. do anything when they have no Lycan ulti. He's the strongest hero on their team effectively as of now, not just in farm, but in terms of game impact and timings. And they're just smoked up. LGD is not afraid of anything. I'm sure that was no just a cares. pleasant surprise on the side of LGD. FY probably saw his shards come when he yeah. scouted it out with the Sizzle and was just very happy with it. Orchid on Co-op, by the way. Oh, blinking in. They find the Rubik, but can't blow him up yet. Paparazzi does have his Lincoln Sphere for the beginning of this fight if he wants to turn it. I don't know how Vici takes a fight here. Chalice is unkillable with no Lycan ulti. I mean, it doesn't look like LGD feel comfortable forcing it yet, at least. Yeah, I don't know if they can necessarily force anything, but Vici does have to sit all five heroes here because they can't leave their half of the map when L when LGD is playing like this. Oh. And they do catch the Bane with the X, but I don't, that's not going to happen. There's just too much counter initiation on the side of LGD. Omni's actually queued up a Radiance, which I think makes it so it's even even more coarse on the side of LGD, which is absolutely fine. They just got the Blink Dagger delivered on the Tusk. So more save coming out from LGD for a lot of different things. Bane Nightmare, all of Omni's kit, and walking forward, trying to find an opening. That's Quap already on to one. Eleven in trouble, but not yet dead. The Fissure is also blocking him off slightly from getting in towards the rest of his team. And Eleven just going to die. Maybe finds the kill there. Beyond Godlike and Ori also in some trouble. They have shards again in two seconds, and Sonic Wave down. They've got him caught in there in spite of the repel, but Queen of Pain just goes down with the turnaround coming from Paparazzi. They managed to find that kill, and now Chalice going to see if he can get out of there. The Lycan buyback, he can go for the full TP away, and it looks like he is going to be able to escape. But they got Guardian Angel from that. Mm -hmm. They might just walk right into Roche. No Queen of Pain for well, 30 seconds. Whatsoever. Lycan ulti is already popped, so he's just going to use all of his minions here. Maybe just dying. Yeah, he... I mean, that was honestly all paparazzi, turning that with the stolen Omni, and then he repels the Kunkka, I believe it was, and he just wasn't ready for that, the Queen of Pain, and since if you're expecting to kill the target, suddenly you get this 600 HP swing between you and your target, and the guy's gonna live, that's just like something you just don't expect. No. Chalice. The way Gale's playing with these illusions. More fun cooldown still. They have Ame in the area as well. Chalice just walks into the pit, come at me. They still have Guardian Angel, though, able to turn that back around. 
Now the torrent, the boat, it comes in, but the snowball Beautiful. save on top of the echo. Beautiful play coming in from FY. Saving his core as Chalice, doing a good bit of damage to 11 as well. And now maybe it's back into this. They're starting to take them down low. Kunkka about to die. FY God. FY has just been showing up left and right both of these series, game one and this one now. He's had these incredible shards, these snowball saves coming out almost guaranteed on every sticky situation thus far. It's just incredible. That should not have been a fight that, that was that easy for LGD to take, but instead they don't even get their cores down low. They are able to walk right back into this Roche pit, and now they're just, you know, back into control of this game. Yeah, and this is like the virtue of heroes like PL, like Queen of Pain. They never really have to commit to the fight, so heroes like Urshaker, it's just super awkward for them to when do you go? And then suddenly you see this opening and he just gets saved by Snowball. So like this Earthshaker's job is incredibly difficult and it may seem like he's just the four position, but like if you compare his impact to what the Tusk can do in these fights, it's absolutely well, not even close. Mm -hmm. It seems like every time Vici Gaming is making these plays to get back, get themselves back into the game, it's FY <laughs> who makes yeah. some sort of yeah. big play to swing it back into the favor of LGD. Well, I think the other thing to talk about there is that it's it's Vici that are having to make plays to get them back yep. into the game, right? Like, yeah. it's the fact that they're behind because of all the stuff that, that LGD did well in the early stages of this game. Mm -hmm. um, and it's always feeling like Vici are on the back foot. I An 11,000 gold lead now. I think whenever you give maybe Co-op in a game where he's allowed to be active in the early to mid game and they can just play around him, it's like one of the scariest heroes on, I think, any player out there. Mm -hmm. Like, he just always performs on this hero. I really like this uh, Ame picking up. He went defusal into SNY and he's just going to pick up this heart right away. He knows that the only way that he's ever going to die is if he gets bursted down by this Earthshaker, this Morphling, or even the Kunkka, but it, with with the amount of HP that's about to come out on this hero in the regen, he's, he's never going to go down. It's all flat damage to it. It doesn't ever yeah. get him to be more. Exactly. And so it, once he hits this critical threshold, it, the only way he's really ever going to die is like a Morphling later on in the game, but Morphling being... Honestly, like even though he's only 2k gold behind the PL, the fact is the top three net worths in the game are LGD. Uh -huh. Mid lane, FY, not going to be taken down. Say, just Walrus punches Ori and now gets an run onto him as well. Chasing as away the dust. Yes. They're going to look for this guy, see if they There's can get the him. Grip. The Fiend's grip for good measure. And even when Ori tries to make a little play on to that support, well, it's not going to be there. Maybe gets Aegis taken out immediately. Okay, this is looking okay for Vici here. They're gonna pop the Lycan ultimate as well, trying to run away from everybody else. And if they get out with this, this is big, but Paparazzi trying to duck and dive, maybe just blinks right on top of him. They found Paparazzi out of mana, in trouble, and going to go down. Beautiful. Then we do have we do have Earthshaker and Eleven up here pushing out this top wave to ensure that LGD can't push off of that. He's just gonna TP out, make sure he doesn't feed himself. Goodness. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a tough go right now for VG Gaming. That's just getting worse and worse. There's little things like, you know, taking that Aegis off of maybe, it's big. But. I will say from a PL's perspective, I think one of the hardest things to deal with is when the enemy team is able to itemize and play in a way that they kind of just ignore you, stuff like Crimson Guard. And they don't have any of that on the side of VG. So this PL is going to be effective for the entire course of the game, and it's never going to like. The only way his effectiveness will dwindle is if they finally get to that stage where it's Kunga level 25, has like double Daedalus, and just one shots him. But aside from that, you know, if that if the game never reaches that point, then this PL is absolutely un they can't they can't deal with it. They, they have no way to chew through this health. And Ame's been playing it really smart in these fights. He just sends illusions in. He actually hasn't committed to a single kill. And if you really want to know why PL's not bad against Earthshaker, watch this replay and understand how you play team fights because this Earthshaker has no counterplay to just sending illusions at his cores yeah. and PL just sitting in the back. And eventually when the Earthshaker finally fissures or commits, then the PL is allowed to go in. Chalice is just now finishing his Radiance. And that's so. just so scary. So much just like sustain just got a lot and of gold. damage. Yeah, 20, just 28 minute yeah. drums pipe Radiance. That is terrifying. Yeah. And almost Shiva's done on Somnus as well. I mean, you just compare the farm on him, and it's it's just been everything this game. Like, Ori is at 9k net worth. He's almost, like, the FY is catching up to him at this point. And there's the heart done on the PL. And Vici really, really struggling for answers. I love the Eon disc queued up on the on the United as well. Just in case they manage to happen to burst me, I'll just have an Eon disc. Mm -hmm. It's a free Radiance repel, free purification, whatever he wants to Radiance get off. Middle tower is under attack. 
It just seems like LGD has been in control of this game. Chalice, ever since he got that free lane, got guaranteed that soul ring and then put in a 1v1 situation versus this Lycan, he's just been snowballing. Like, he, he just, they haven't really had an answer for him. Lycan got a few pickoffs on him, but the rest of LGD was always making plays. I like at least what Vici are doing here with the, you know, hiding off to the side in the creep waves, ready to cut them whenever possible. Um, and they're they're kind of like delaying this game. Because as we said, there is that sort of late game scenario of a, a Kunkka with level 25 uh, and, you know, a lot more gold on him. But this is the way that you do it. It's sort of the long, hard slog to get there as 11 is going to be found by Ame and the stomp from the creep. Although I think that this creep well, might get away. Yeah, he has no active on the defusal. But he's also not afraid of anything, so he can just chase it. <laughs> All right, maybe not. <laughs> and Ame's just tanking up raw health. Who cares? Because there's no defensive items on the side of Vici, so in terms of, like, Crimson's, like I said. So no damage mitigation is probably the better way of wording it. He doesn't oh, need any no. damage items. And uh, Morphling is... Uh, <laughs> oh! <laughs> <laughs> but meanwhile, PL just solo killing the Rubik. Okay. <laughs> Well, that's less good for them then. He's getting <laughs> ran at by a Lycan, but that's a multiple target hero against a single target Lycan. Oh no. Debating with the illusion. All right, the turnaround. Sonic Wave comes out as well. It's on to a bunch of them, and Eleven just trying to run the Yule Scepter lift up. Paparazzi turns into the Omni Knight. He's going to try and save his buddy. Purification, Repel as well, but now Paparazzi needs to escape. So it looks like with that, they might work, but FY is there again with the punch. The Echo Slam, it's not nearly enough damage, though, and the Snowball just pulls him further away, and Morphling silenced walking out of there but it's all on the retreat and LGD just streaming forward taking these heroes down Ori enfeebled this Kunkka is not where he wants to be and the buildings being assaulted is LGD again showing they are the dominant force in China Future Gaming just doesn't really have an answer. There was that initial dive there where Ame had a bunch of illusions out on top of the Lycan, and, and Earthshaker came in for this, you know, quick Echo Slam, but Somnus just blinks in, gets the Orchid off on the Earth er, Earthshaker, and immediately just ignores him, moves on to another target. We he got a long the days, threat. folks, and LGD do not want to stick around that much longer. They're trying to end the game right now. They know that after this one, they have a couple more series to play, more games to play. Only one series, but a lot of That's games. Fair. A lot of games. VGJ Storm sitting over here, probably watching these same games. Ah, uh, they're probably just taking a nap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're confident. This is an A Dota. We don't you need to. Yeah. yeah. Not and studying up, nah. preparing for this LGD. Maybe he's looking threatening. Didn't oh. work for you guys. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. What what team were you on? Oh. That? <laughs> <laughs> That's a, that's a pretty good bad, point man. there. Well, uh, feeds full grip. duration, Fiend's grip, and they give him the GG. Well played. And LGD kind of just looked like the better team today, and I'm glad to see that because no offense to VG Gaming, but they didn't really put on a show against VGJ yesterday, so yeah. I think this will kind of bode for a much more exciting final series. And the one thing I wanted to say that I learned from this game, because there are, you know, one out of every couple – Hundred, maybe maybe five hundred games. I learned something mm -hmm. right. is that the PL versus Morphling matchup. It's a little hard to deal with it later on as the PL because the Morphling can just steal the PL doppelganger and it's really hard to kill him as, as the game goes on. But PL is a faster hero, so LGD's response is we're gonna put Bane PL in your face mm. and we're gonna run at you once this PL gets six. And then because the PL six allows you to dive with all the illusions tanking the tower. Mm -hmm. This Morphling is just getting ran at, and he's a hero kind of like Luna, where he just wants a little bit of space. He doesn't farm nearly as fast as Luna, but he doesn't die all that easily. But if you just run at him, he can't really fight back all that well early on in the game. So I learned a lot about that matchup specifically, that as long as you don't let the Morphling be against something like an Omni Knight, where he's just going to trade farm, instead you pressure the Morphling, PL being a hero that comes online with level 6, Morphling not so much. This Omni Knight gets a good start top, and then suddenly this Morphling is really slow, mm -hmm. and these supports are stuck chasing him around, and then you just win. Exactly. And, and Vici Gaming tried to give an answer to this PL with the, the Lanham, you know, the Earthshaker pick, and as you said, it wasn't a counter. And they also spent, he spent most of his time early game trying to maneuver around middle and hopefully, you know, help out Ori here, but but the, the snowball saves coming out from the side of FY and everything that just not nothing worked out mid lane. Yeah, and yeah. so this Earthshaker and this, and this Kunkka just ended up in a in a not so good position. If there is have an impact. one thing I can say, please, I know I've said it multiple times, chat. Please, PL is not countered by Earthshaker. <laughs> you that heard it here all. first. So I I just want to take a moment to you know Nobody heard Vici me. Gaming, <laughs> Vici Gaming, uh, very very impressive performance in the group stages. Uh, a good tournament showing overall. They finished third place. 
But for me, LGD, holy crap, you look at this run that they've made now. They have lost. They started in the best of ones. Yeah, they started yeah. in the best of they ones. Did. They have lost one game in the playoffs. That's it. And they only lost it against TNC. So every other series they've won has been a 2 0. They 2 0 uh, Secret. They 2 0 Newbie. Now they've 2 0 Vici Gaming. They went 1 0 over IG Vitality and then 2 1 over TNC. This is, to me, one of the most impressive lower bracket runs that I've seen in a very long time. And now, that's what we said, that this was one of the teams that had the capabilities of doing it. Now, to be fair, they did start in the lower bracket, right. you know, after the group stage. So it's not quite, you know, they got knocked out and now they've, they've got this underdog story. But, you know, it does still look really, really nice. They, they've just been performing time in and time out, like, endlessly. And I, I'm really excited for this next BO5 here versus VGJ Storm because both of these teams have just looked unstoppable. Yeah. And you have the Ame vs. Resolution show. Not to say that nobody else in this game is impactful because we have seen some sick plays from FY as well as like MSS on the four position. Both players absolutely playing out of their minds. But both teams, they have a player that their entire strategy centers around. So I, I love this kind of like – they have similar play styles between yeah, the yeah, two teams, and I think it's going to be really cool to see it kind of come into fruition. I don't think these two teams – they played each other in the in the group stage, I they guess. They did, um, and it was Vici Gaming Storm who beat them 2-0. Oh. So there is a little bit of that going on there as well. There you go. Um, but NA Dota. NA Dota. I mean, there you go. But that's also before LGD were feeling really strong and before they were – I mean, again, that sickness that they were talking about, I don't know how much it affects it, but like based upon the, the things that we've seen, it feels like it was a lot. Mm -hmm. At the very least, they've changed their style around recently. So um, – Whoever wins this next best of five, it's a great storyline. Mm -hmm. Either Vici J Storm going on and continuing dominance, winning both a minor and a major, or LGD coming back from the lower bracket and being mm -hmm. able to take it. I'm so happy that this is the way it's turned out. Um, I don't know if we have an interview or not. I saw some people gathering together on the stage, but sometimes they don't have the English version of those. We do have an interview. Hype. So I believe that we're going to be going to that in mm -hmm. a second or two. Um, I'll wait to hear from production in my ear about when that happens. Um, any other standout things in the draft for you guys? FY's playing out of control. Do, were there any other players that you felt like really went uh, went off the chain? I for, mean, uh, Somnus on these comfort zone heroes. I like yep. how both games he just played these active heroes. Oh, yeah. And I think that that's exactly what fits them best. I would like them to stay away from these storm type heroes. I think that him being on these early impact, survivable, independent type heroes just makes him... And, like, not necessarily independent. Like, he played the DP, and that's something where that's not necessarily the survival of an independent hero, but it's like a hero that just runs at you. And we saw in the first game his impact from winning the mid lane was astounding. I hear some interview in time, so let's go take a look. There it is. So congratulations, LGD. We have FY God here. So you're not going to versus VGJS for the final. 我们看到在这个第一局当中，你们采取了一个非常平缓的这种换路的战术。那么在这个平凡换路战术之中，你们有取得你们想要的这种效果吗？So for the first game, you switch lane very frequently. So is this your strategy, and have you like reached your strategy purpose? 呃，我们预想的中是大哥比较肥嘛，然后可能换路就是没有把大哥打肥，然后我很肥，然后我很早我很早出了骨灰，然后就把对面。So, our switch lane strategy is to like get our carry super farm, but actually I get super farm, so I think I lead the game to win. Okay, 那么我们看，其实，在之前的正中杯当中，有一个比较有意思的小细节啊，就是在比赛暂停的时候，你们有在这个小地图上面画字帮查理斯征婚。现在有这个结果了吗 ？So during Alexander uh, at the Passing phase, I think you draw some something on minimap to find a girlfriend for Charlie. So any result? <coughs> Marriage is maybe far, but did finding a girlfriend maybe. 好，那么现在 LG 战队已经是会确定受邀 TI 八了，而你们只用了接近三个月的时间就完成了这样一项壮举。会不会在接下来的比赛当中影响到你们的心态呢？你们是怎么样完成这样的一个非常恐怖的逆袭的 ？So you now get directly invited to the the international eight,、uh, and all the DPC points are get in the、uh, in the three months. So this is relatively a short time. Like,、uh, what's your future purpose? Like, how are you gonna set a strategy? 呃，因为这队内气氛比较好，然后
大家平时也会去讨论，然后输了比赛也会去，就是看录像怎么进步吧。然后我觉得这点是我们拿到这么多成绩最关键的东西。I think the team environment is good, and we're gonna watch most of the VODs to find out our own strategy. So probably this is what we're gonna do and how we reach it. 好的，那么也是感谢 FY 来接受我们的采访，同时再次祝贺 LGD 已经杀入了我们本次比赛的总决赛。接下来的话呢，让我们来期待他们在总决赛当中的表现。一会儿见。Well, and there we have it, ladies and gentlemen, the interview with FY God himself. Shoutouts to MDL, Molly, all those folks over there for giving us the English translation. Uh, you know, I didn't, I didn't have to do that. It's, it's good to even throw it up there on stage. I like it's that a lot. Cool. Yeah. It's funny to see that interview. You know, we were talking about FY, how well he was playing and all that, but it seems like he doesn't need to hear from us. <laughs> he's feeling, true. He's feeling real confident. It looks yeah. like he's a matchmaker. He can help out Chalice getting the girl, and he can play some Dota. I mean, if you're... If you're that good at Dota, you're that good looking, I'm sh I, there's no limit to what you can do. That's true. That's true. You don't have a point. Wouldn't know. Well, ladies <laughs> and gentlemen, that's going to do it for the lower bracket finals. Uh, again, shout out Chef Joss, Mr. Wonderful, uh, Brian Slam Jamma as well uh, for, for doing the coverage. And we'll be back in a little bit with our grand finals. Might be a little while as LG need to take some time, but stick around. More to come right after this. Goodbye.